Hangers is out to sea. Oh good, that's where the fish are. table which will either inspire you with all of its paint and glitter or completely drive you insane there's two types of people <laughs> but anyway um we are gearing up because oh Davy's here too we are getting ready for two things the blue hill fair and where we s submit like our um handiworks and, and uh felted animals and stuff and then the Machias Fiber Festival, where Elsie is going to be uh, carrying her felted animals, and this time Davy is going to as well, which he's very excited about. He's got some. Wait, what's this one? This one doesn't have a name. Uh, it's some kind of snake. Yeah. I like the names. What's the name of that snake? It doesn't have a name. <gasps> He has Dave the snake, Rattle the rattlesnake, Rex the snake, Peace the platypus, Cece the cat. So oh. he's been working very hard. Elsie's going to show you hers too. Uh -huh. And I am helping out by crocheting some rugs for them. Which, for the Blue Hill Fair, I won't include because they're more like sticklers on. Like it was all made by you and all handmade and everything. So, won't do it for that. But, um... This, this is this Noro that I got at, went on my yarn cruise and back in February. And don't judge me, I know it's kind of expensive yarn to make <laughs> yarn rugs out of. But I figure, you know, you just gotta, you can't just let it sit in your stash one, forever. One so. of them's gonna be a million dollars. Oh no! Which animal cost a million dollars? The bear? The bear cost a million dollars. A ladybug. Oh, oh. I was just kidding. Old. I'd have to start saving up your pennies if it's going to cost a million dollars. It's not really a million dollars. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, one penny, and they're all going to be like three dollar bills. Three, yeah, that's what Elsie sold them for last yeah. time. That's why I'm going to do it now. Okay. Yeah. It's a good price. Mm -hmm. All right, you gonna, can, uh, do you want to show us your creatures that you've made so far? Mm-hmm. Some of them were like um some from the craft Quite fair. A pause. <laughs> <laughs> from the cla from the craft fair. The other the fiber frolic. Yeah. <sighs> Damn, you your and then animal. there's some new ones. This one is Leafy the <laughs> Lizard. Little far. <laughs> we're gonna fill them out. Yeah, we're gonna fill them down a little bit more, do some quality control. But that one actually looked pretty good. I like the upgrades you've made to the eyes. And and then some of them don't have rugs, so mommy's knitting them right now. I'm crocheting this one. This one's orange, the fennec fox. 
Mm. Show a side view. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. And then this one I just made today. This one is um pine the black bear. Add a little nose to him. I still think he needs feet. <laughs> Might need a tail, but not feet. No feet? Why? I put feet on this one. Oh, see that one has nice feet. You can barely Next see up them. Next up is Little the Sheep. This one's my I, favorite. I've spoke it. Yeah. Mm. This one's Mommy's favorite. Her favorite animal is sheep, so. so. Because she was, because she was born at a farm. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's very true. And then last but not least, we have... Roar the lion. His eyes are a little too close. <laughs> He's a little cross eyed, but that's okay. Yeah, so is my papa. We were doing artwork this time uh, for the first time this year, too, which uh, I was nervous about because it's in my wheelhouse and I didn't understand exactly what they meant about um, maybe some of you art people will know. Oh, do you have more? Sorry, did I interrupt you? Okay. Pause. So, this one was one from the last craft fair, but no one bought him. <laughs> he was the last one, so. It was Tad the Tadpole. Tad but the Tadpole. Taddy, sorry. Um, show the, the, uh, the rug that you're making go with him now. There's a penny blue outside. What? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, mommy, mommy, okay. you. This is one also from last. Um, I did. So, um, I didn't mean to not sell City the Pigeon. We just didn't have a rug for her. We didn't find it, so I didn't sell her, but... Now he has a rug. Uh, can you show them the punch punch needle that you're working on? Okay. I don't know she thought she would up the she would sweeten the deal on Taddy a little bit by including a rug with him, <laughs> which I think is is amazing the continuity to me. Let's see between felted taddy and punched taddy. Mm -hmm. So this is the wrong side, the punch side. You wanna show the other side too? Yeah, ooh, that was close. There he is, Taddy the Tadpole. Don't steal her juice. God, thank you, Ryan. A phone call, see, I've been being extra good about um, actually returning phone calls on time, so I'm gonna stop this video. And I'm going to take that call because it's probably a, a yarn person. Okay, I'm back. We're back. And I had started to say the artwork was making me a little nervous because they had these very specific rules, which I'm sure if I was a photographer or a like, painting artist, I would know about. But they said that it needed eyelets and wire. So I ended up Actually, I didn't even tell you this. I ended up buying like a eyelet kit thing. It's probably overkill. But I was just so worried because I had my nieces, Charlotte and Grace, also make some art to enter. And they're going to be so disappointed if it gets like disqualified because I didn't mount it correctly. So uh, we'll see. If you have any tips on how to properly mount artwork for an exhibit, I would love to hear from you because I'm not sure exactly what they want, but we're very excited for the fair this year. I'm gonna go get another thing that I'm gonna enter into the craft fair. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm gonna show you some of mine too. I minute. mean, I mean the Blue Hill Fair. Blue Hill Fair. They call uh, Machias Fiber Festival the craft fair because 
that was a little easier <laughs> to remember. Um, yes. I'm just going to show you some of her artwork here. And da Davey's going to enter some of his felted animals. He actually sewed uh, a little blanket last year for Ruben that he entered, and he did such a good job and got a blue ribbon. This is my... Um, there are many types of foxes in the world picture. Very nice. Arctic fox, Bennett fox, and red fox. Mm. Mommy, what is it? Check on this. Could you, you try to give me a punk set? Yeah. Davy hasn't learned to punch yet. He wants to learn how to punch. However, he has a lot on his learning to-do list because he also got a violin for his birthday. And he's very excited to start learning that. Elsie plays the piano. I actually, I play the guitar and the violin. So I'm going to... He's a violin teacher. Yes. I actually did do lessons for a while. Um, I am going to try to teach him everything I know, which can be a little hard to learn from mommy sometimes, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I think he's, he's very excited. So he got a quarter size. It's so cute, but you want to see it? Yeah. Go get your violin. You can show everybody. And yeah, my fair submission. So I realized it's been like the year of the hat this year. That's pretty much all I've done is hats. But um, I'm not sure everything what I'll submit, but I'll show you in a second. This is it's the violin. Mm -hmm. And you want to hear a song? Let me get out of your way. Everybody, it's me I'm back um okay so there's so much news it's been like the whole summer again I filmed a couple of podcasts that I didn't actually publish but um and it sounds like Dave is back from the mill Dave has still been making mill trips for me um you might have known that he he got laid off at the wharf like a while ago now like 2019 and he's still been claiming and um he decided to go back to school for education and this year he's almost done. He had to do student teaching and uh, thankfully he's doing student teaching where he can still, um, he's like actually, te he's the teacher but will count for student teaching and he can still make meal trips for me which is so nice because I can have a baby in December. <laughs> and I did meal trips with a newborn and it was not awesome so okay he even bought brought me a drink i think it's because he didn't like it <laughs> um it, it 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 is weird it's the blood orange thing from dunkin donuts um i did have a pumpkin spice latte the other day and i know we're switching topics here i'm sorry you're gonna have to bear with my pregnancy brain because 25 weeks but wow it's there um I have a fall thing coming up. Should I just say what it is? I won't, I won't, I'll keep it a secret. But anyway, and I don't normally do this, but I, I got everything ready so that I could like have it ready to roll out while I was at the Blue Hill Fair so that I could just, in theory, you know, like sit back and relax and enjoy the fair, which, I say that, but I'm not gonna be able to keep myself away because I enjoy it. So anyway, I got it already. I was like, but what if I just did it today? What if I just rolled it out today? So I won't, I, I will wait, but I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about fall. Um, I am enjoying the summer. I'm enjoying the last of the summer, but it's hard because I'm very excited about fall. Fall in Maine is the best. And um, yes, I have indeed forgotten what I was talking about before. So, 
as far as what I've been working on, like I said, I feel like it's been the year of the hat. I have not completed very much else besides hats this year. We did a lot of knit-alongs with hats. I did um, quite a few pairs of mittens. I did my shawl and I did do two sweaters, but they were for a sweater pattern, which I just need to release, but I'm just, I want to do it right. And, um, you know, sweater pattern is, okay, so for a simple shawl pattern that I released, even it's just a, an all over lace motif with the tassel edging, you're like, oh, that's simple. I could sit down and write that right now without even knitting it. And maybe you could, but even it's like the more that I went over it, it went over it and proofread it. There was still like a huge mistake in it, but I think I corrected. I mean, I know I corrected it on the, on the website. And then I even like knit a few swatches just to make sure, but somehow in the printed copies that I sent out in the Anne of Green Gables boxes, there was a mistake in, in the lace pattern. And I think it was my computer didn't, I expected it to auto save and it didn't. So it usually comes down to computers messing me up, but, um, and then this year has also been the Sylvie coat year and I've done the sleeves and then started on the back. Uh, it's just taken me forever because I haven't been working on it steadily. I've been, you know, doing other things and I do like to have multiple projects going, but I've kind of found that this one was like, oh, pfft, what? Oh, <sighs> These are supposed to be on, on a holder, not just all loose and free. I don't know how they got that way. Anyway, um, I kind of needed to devote my attention to it and I, I've been busy with other knitting projects, so I haven't. Um, but this is a knit along, so I do plan on finishing it by the end of the year. And, um, I thought I was all alone, but when I posted a little bit back asking if I was all alone or just assuming that I was, I'm just putting these stitches on threading this yarn through it so I don't lose them. Um, there was like a dozen people that said, no, I'm still here. <laughs> like, oh good. So I think that those of us who actually make it, I think we should each get a special prize not just a choose a winner from the pool I think everyone in the pool should get a prize so we'll see we'll see <laughs> if anyone finishes anyone including me it's gonna be nice it's gonna be really nice in fact I probably I'll probably use it as a coat because I'm due December 1st and um I always have this problem with winter pregnancies like I don't know if you've ever priced out a maternity coat, but whoo, they're expensive, super expensive. And you only use it for just a couple months. And, but then you really do need it because you can't go out without a coat. So not in Maine at least. So I don't know, we'll see. I think I think I might try to use it as a coat. And um, another, another fun thing is that at the Machias Fiber Festival, which is um, September 10th at Elm Street School, in East Machias, Maine. We, I did a little like meetup thing for people who are part of the Knitters and Crocheters of Maine group. And there's gonna be like a secret inquire only giveaway and a secret little goodie bag. So if you're not part of that group, maybe you don't wanna be, but it is a nice group. And I've noticed lately that like every knitting group I've been in has had trouble with spam and I'm, I'm wondering like, is it going on in the group and I don't see it because it's been like every group, but I haven't found it. So <laughs> I should just be careful what I say there. I shouldn't mention it at all, but anyway, knock on wood. Um, another thing that I've been working on is um, this. I had it blocking on a balloon and a balloon was just too exciting <laughs> for Ruben. So I found, cause it's hard to block a bonnet, like um, I found that this roll of country roving worked perfectly as a, a bonnet blocker. But yes, this is made out of silk and I had to wash it several times. So I, I hand spun this too. I don't remember where I got it. I always think it came with 
some like something I ordered from Paradise Fibers one time. Oh, Elsie has a popsicle in each hand, walking through the yard and flowers falling behind her. I think Flower is hoping for a bite of popsicle, but we'll see. Anyway, this is a drops pattern and I can link it below if I remember. Huh. Below. And <laughs> now the cat is following the frame. <laughs> anyway, um, and drops patterns are really controversial because they are translated from like Norwegian or something and Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, uh, I think it's Norwegian, but anyway, in Nordic language. And sometimes they are like, there's definitely some things lost in translation. Like, um, certain parts of this bonnet, I was like, well, why does it say that? But I just, I did what seemed logical rather than just trying to follow the pattern word for word, knowing it was a drops pattern. Sometimes when I do that, I'm like, oh, later on, I realized that's why they said to do this at the same time. But this was not bad. And um, I love the lace. I love the eyelets. I was a little ambivalent about this pin tuck, they called it, but I like it. I like it. And they called for a ribbon to thread through the bottom. I don't know if I'll do ribbon or eye cord. I haven't decided yet, but so technically this is going to be her coming home bonnet. I love bonnets for babies because they're so like they're elegant and they're like a statement piece kind of thing. But if you're short on time or your knitting list is too long like me, then um, they're really quick and they don't take much yarn. Um, yeah, so technically it's her going to be her coming home bonnet, but she, if everything goes to plan, is going to be born at home. So, which is different for all my other babies who are born in hospitals. Um, it's all the births have been so different. Just, you know how that goes. But um, I had the first two in Ellsworth, Elsie, like I went naturally and didn't even have an IV, no intervention. Uh, Davy, he was two weeks overdue. Uh, it was like an emergency, didn't have enough fluid. And um, yeah, I had to be induced. And then Ruben, they had they brought a midwife into Machias. So Machias is like more like 30 minutes for me rather than like two hours to Ellsworth. Um, or maybe an hour and a half. I don't know. And that was a great experience. And then the midwife left. And I was like, I really like like the midwifery model of care. Um, but she started her own practice, but she just does home births and she's making a birth suite, but it's not ready yet. So I went back and forth for a long time. I actually didn't even have a baby appointment until I was 15 weeks. Um, normally, you know, you start at like eight weeks because I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do. So I'm doing the home birth, but I kind of say it like, I think I'm doing a home birth. So if any of you have had experiences with home births, you can let me know uh, what that was like. Um, I am also, you know, preparing for the possibility of, because you never know what might happen, uh, of going to the hospital. And I've been to the hospital before. I gave birth to Ruben there. So that's good. I feel like at least I'm familiar with that. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know, maybe it's a good thing, you know. We have all our sheepies born at home, right? So <laughs> more of a natural model. I don't think I'll go out in the field, but especially not because it'll be December. <laughs> oh, but anyway, so that's all exciting. And you probably know the gender already. Well, you definitely know the gender because, uh, you know, I have this lacy little girl bonnet. But um, what I'll do is I'll put the gender reveal video like before this. So you will have already watched that. Um, but yes, it's a girl. Took me by surprise. I thought it felt like a boy pregnancy. Um, but yes. So, a very exciting fall ahead of us. It's just amazing. Like, I love setting goals for the new year and making plans. And every morning, my favorite thing to do is, like, to write down my to-do list. And it's funny, just the, 
at the beginning of the year, what you think the year is going to be like, and then how it actually turns out is just poetic sometimes. But I still like making those plans, even if they get ruined. But okay, back to knitting. Yeah, so I have to finish my Sylvie by the end of the year. Flowers <laughs> trying to get in, take the popsicles for herself. I have to finish my Sylvie coat, but there's so many things I would like to do. Um, I There's that, uh, the Shetland Wool Week, Wool Week, I believe it's called. This year is one with like waves and anchors. And I'm like, oh man, that starts September 24th. Um, I would really like to do that. I see people have been getting like five different sport colors to do that with. And I'm like, oh, I would... I would do it, although I, I love the ones I've seen, like pinks and orange and purples and stuff, but I would have to do it. I feel like in like navy, navy, cream, gray, you know, those kind of oceany colors. I've already made so many color work hats this year, though. I mean, I've done the Alaska hat, the Ruska hat. I did several, the, the moose hat, which... I still haven't finished the lining for it. I blocked it and it's beautiful, but it does need a lining because the, or some, at least an edging because the ear flaps will go. Maybe I should just do like an I cord or crochet edging and then do tassels for that. Try not to get too fancy. I did have this nice wool plaid fabric that I wanted to line it with though, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, and then my mom is doing a knit along. They already started, but for the Avery Rock shawl, and I believe it uses, it would use sport weight. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be like Briggs and Little Sport, but it could be, and I'm in the group, but I haven't started it because I was like, oh man, I already have so much going on. So then, you know, I want to make Christmas presents and I'm knitting socks right now for Elsie and Evangeline, which I think I'll enter those into the fair too. Uh, the bonnet is going to the fair and the shawl, the Anne of Green Gables shawl. Um, and maybe some of those hats that I mentioned, but I've been wearing them, so they're a little a little worn. And when you enter things into the fair, they're not so much like, they don't care about like complex patterns or like fancy yarns. In fact, I think, I don't know them personally, but I think at least some of the judges are like from the Red Heart generation. <laughs> like. They really sold that acrylic yarn like, oh, only peasants wear wool. Like, you need this good acrylic stuff. Anyway. Anyway, not being judgmental if you like Red Heart. That's totally okay with me. But anyway, they are very much sticklers on, like, tucking in knots, tucking in ends, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, I I don't know. Some of my, I, I think they'd be okay. But anyway, we'll see what I do about that. Well, I probably should cut it short because I think I have a lot of videos to show you, a lot of just slice of life kind of things. And um, I even have like back into like shearing time to show you. I didn't get to shear this year. I was, I've shorn through all my other pregnancies, but this one, I am a month farther along than I was with the others. And um, I was told I had to be a little more restful this pregnancy um I had we had a little bit of a scare but it turned out to be like the only thing that it could be that was like okay if that makes any sense but um yeah so I've been trying to take it easy but like it's like take it easy but also exercise <laughs> like okay <laughs> oh but anyway um, yeah, so I didn't get to shear, but we, we did shear and we have some island trips coming up. We have to go out to the island to tend the sheep. And other than that, they've just been happily munching along. Uh, like I said, I haven't been much good for sheep work this year besides just, uh, hey, go, go you, go ahead. <laughs> good job. But, um, yeah, there's some exciting things coming up and... I promise that I will actually publish this podcast and you'll get to see some summary videos getting ready for fall over here. So it's nice chatting with you. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>
Jeez, that's so wobbly. Jeez, that's so wobbly. <laughs> Chapstick with feet. <laughs> Chopstick? Chapstick or chopstick? Chopstick. Oh, okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh oh, Ruben. We're stuck. <laughs> he can't. We're stuck. No, oh, Ruben. No. It's too cold for swimming. Um. <laughs> Oh boy. Come here. You're gonna watch him too? Goodbye, yeah. son. Goodbye. Oh my goodness. That's cold, you know. I don't care. Make sure he doesn't get in the water. Oh boy. This is gonna end with me taking a swim here. I can tell already. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, my hurts. That's a good one, Dave. Wow. Get her by the jaw. Get her by the jaw. Oh, <laughs> that's a big one. That's a smallmouth bass. Wow. job with all those rose bushes. You need all this? You need a bridge? Ha, ha, ha. 